percent. These are for companies, and those are that's why we had the great numbers for jobs. But now what I'm doing is I'm going, and nobody thought that was possible, and I got it approved by Congress, believe it or not. Now we're going to 21, from 21 to 15 percent, but you have to make your product in the USA. So if you want to take advantage of the low tax rate, you have to make your product. So we'll be down to 15 percent. That gives us one of the lowest tax rates in the whole world, so it's more than competitive. Companies will come here. But in addition to that, we're going to keep this really uh, terrible competition. I don't mind the word competition, but it's predatory. And we're going to t keep this competition out so that you're able to grow your business and grow it well. And you'll make the product and you'll sell it inside our country. And uh, I know exactly what your situation is. And it's so easy to solve. We're going to need the help of the Senate. We're going to need the help of the House. And if they won't do it, I have the authorization and the power to do it myself, and we'll have to do it. Okay? Well, and that's why we need Mike Rogers need as Mike Rogers. Senator Mike Rogers. And we've got Lisa McLean, Congresswoman McLean. Right. Yes. A warrior. Yes, she is a warrior and the amazing, incredible Congressman John James. Hey, John. Good. And they will help us help us get this done. I, I appreciate that you talked about tariffs, and I think it's so important that you continue to call out China, and we support you on that, because we don't want China building those plants in Mexico and then running those cars across the border. Without any tax whatsoever, and putting everybody here in not only danger, it's over. Your union head, I don't know who he is, Sean Fain or something, whoever this guy is, he sold you out because he let Biden, who, who doesn't know what he's doing, I mean, you probably noticed, he let this guy come up with an all-electric mandate. Those cars are all going to be built in China. We want cars built in the USA. It's very simple. And they're going to come in at levels. We'll be having, we'll be having auto manufacturing at levels that we haven't seen in 50 years. We're going to have a lot of companies coming in. And we're going to make it competitive so they can come in and they can thrive. Not like this gentleman where they come in and they dump product. And you know what they do? They dump the product cheaply, and then everyone goes out of business. Then they take over the businesses, and they sell it for two and three times what it was selling for before. They, the whole thing, it's really not too com You know, Rockefeller in the old days, he used to open a gas station. He used to underprice it by, by 50, 100. He'd give the gas away. He'd drive the people out of business around him. Then he'd buy up the gas stations or close them and he'd make a fortune. That's what exactly what they do on an even bigger scale. We're not going to let it happen. It's going to be over. We're going to have a smart system of tariffs. And by the way, if they don't want to play that game, then we're going to get a lot of money from tariffs. So I charge, Marsha can tell you, I charged hundreds of billions of dollars to China in tariffs and taxes. No other president has ever charged China 10 cents. And we take in hundreds of billions of dollars, so much so that Biden can't get rid of it. He's still got it on. You know, he wants to, but it's so much money. And frankly, it's, it's a lot of money. But also, if you did get rid of it, they'd come in and they'd put all your businesses out of business. So the Senate and the House have to get really smart on this because purposely over a period of years, they've given it a bad name. Actually, I consider it one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. The word tariff, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Almost, almost as beautiful as that chart that I look to the right. Almost as beautiful. Where is that chart? Where is that chart? Do they have it? I love that chart. Oh, I love that chart. Whoa. That's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. If I didn't look over there real fast, I guess I wouldn't be with you tonight, right? 
That's um, I sleep with that chart. I go to bed with it. I kiss it. Good night. I love you, baby. That chart. But the word tariff is a beautiful word if properly used, and it gives us power, strength. And you know, beyond just economic strength, there are times when I had two countries fighting. I don't want to tell you which ones because, but I had two countries fighting. It looked like they were going to go to war again. I think Rick Grinnell is here. Is Rick Grinnell here? I think so. Did a fantastic job. Yeah. They're fighting. I said, fellas, you guys want to fight. You want to kill people in your countries. That's okay. But if you do, I'm going to charge you 200% tariff to do business with the United States. And that's it. They called me back two days later. Sir, we've made peace. After years, we've made peace. So, you know, it really does. It has a great power to it. There's a great power if you know how to use it. Well, it does indeed. And another thing with great power was the 2017 Trump tax cuts. And we need Republicans in the Senate and the House to make the Trump tax cuts permanent. Right. Well, she's right. They want to raise your taxes. They want to take out the Trump tax cuts, which will I think close to depression time, not recession, but depression time, because it, it was the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And you got a lot of other things, too. Uh, estate tax, death tax. If you love your children and you want to leave your business to them or whatever, does anybody not love their children? Because if you don't love your children, then it doesn't help you too much. But if you want to leave, but uh, leave it to anybody. But you had no zero estate tax. You had zero death tax, we call it. Sometimes I like the word estate better than death, but a lot of people use the word death. And that was a big thing because you would have a farm and you'd leave it to your children and they have a big tax to pay. They'd go out to the bank, they'd borrow the money, they'd end up losing the farm and living like hell. And part of our tax cuts, nobody even talks about it, but the people that, that are involved in this stuff really say that's one of the best things. You have no estate or death tax to pay, so it's really great. Well, we're going to... They want to end that. We'll lower those taxes. We'll have those tariffs. We're going to make those cars right here and then see them loaded on a Teamster-driven big rig and taken all across the country. And thank you to the Teamsters. Did you know I got 60% of the vote with the Teamsters? So thank you, Teamsters. That's yes. the first time that happened in a long time. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. Thank you, Teamsters. Our next question is from Ashley. Whoops, stepped on that water bottle. Hi, Mr. President. Hi. Thank you so much for coming to Michigan. My name is Ashley, and I work at the Chrysler plant. Like many auto workers, I am deeply concerned about the future of our industry, with many jobs being outsourced as we speak. What actions will you take to ensure that our jobs stay in America so we can continue to build the best cars in the world here in Michigan? So pretty much as we've been saying, and what I want to do is I want to be able to look your business. Years ago in this area, I was honored as the man of the year. It was maybe 20 years ago. Oh, and the fake news heard about it. They said, it never happened. It never happened. And I didn't know who it was. It was a group that honored me as man of the year. The fakers back there, see the fake news? But they said, they said, oh, and they looked and it, you know, they said it never happened, but I said, I swear to you, it happened, it did happen, I was man of the year. And I came and I made a speech and I said, why do you allow them to take your car business away? Why do you allow it to happen? They're taking your business away. And I didn't know too much about, all I know is, they were taking your car industry away from you. They said it never happened. And lo and behold, somebody said, I remember the event. And then we found out and we had everything. We got the awards. We had everything. It did happen. But I gave a speech, which at the time was pretty controversial. We can't let them take your car business away. It's such an important business. And you know, it's an important business, even in times of war, where they switch over and it was really something. And I looked at that speech from, I don't know, it's like 19, 20 years ago. And I could repeat it now without changing a word. You cannot let foreign countries, and a lot of the times our worst foes are our 
so-called friends, okay? You know, our friends, the European Union takes tremendous advantage of us. As an example, they give us cars by the millions. We don't have too many Chevrolets in the middle of European cities, okay? European Union is brutal. They don't take our farm products for the most part. They don't take a lot. But unlike Kamala, who always complains and doesn't do anything, I, you know, I keep saying, why don't you do, I saw Marsha the other day, why doesn't she, why didn't she do it four years ago almost? And I say that, you know, she's on the border today, try and justify, what a day for the border. She goes to the border today, and they just announced just before she got up to speak that more than 13,000 murderers from jail, solitary confinement people in many cases, were released. But I just say, let's go back. So we can't let them take our businesses, and we're not going to let them take our businesses. And you can control that so easily through good policy, not her kind of policy, by the way. She changed her policy 15 times. No fracking. Oh, I like fracking. Defund the police. She wants to defund the police. Now, oh, I love the police all of a sudden. By the way, when anybody is into defunding the police even for a day during their career, they can no longer serve as President of the United States. I can do it. So, so we're not going to let them take our businesses. And really, a lot of that's determined by our taxation policy. When China has to pay all that money, the people that liked me the best were the steel companies, because I saved them. They were dumping China and others, but mostly China was dumping steel in here at levels that nobody had ever seen before. And it was putting the steel companies out of business. I put a 50 and 100 percent tax on the dumping of steel, and the steel companies thrived. I saved them. And you have to have the steel companies. So we'll do the same thing. And you don't worry about it. Here's what you have to do. I only ask you to do one thing, and then you can sleep beautifully all night long, go to a job you love, and get a lot of money at the end of the week. You know what the thing is? Vote for Trump. If you vote for Trump, everything's going to be taken. There you go. Everything is going to be taken. Right. And we have Todd. We've got another question over here. Todd, okay, Todd. is over here right there. OK, Hi. he's got his microphone. Todd. Uh, welcome, President Trump. Uh, first off, I want to say